What's up YouTube artists and aspiring artists? It's Mike here with Aerosol Custom Spray Paint Art. Today we're rocking out a kind of creepy landscape scene. So I wanted to go with something dark and brooding. For today's painting, I'm only using a few shades of green, black and white, uh, some transparent white and some clear coat. If you're just getting started, make sure to check out the beginner tutorial series. Here you'll see me just creating my background. So just doing a bit of a fade, texturizing that, and then pulling some of that paint off in the middle to reveal that nice bright green background. Here's the transparent white. I'm using Montana paint in today's spray paint tutorial. Coming across with some foggy mist that's gonna set the stage and give a bit of depth to our layers. Here I'm using just a flat tipped paintbrush. I'm gonna go in and paint some very, very rough trees. If you've watched Bob Ross, you know all about happy little trees. Well, these are crappy little trees. And the reason I don't focus too much on making these ones perfect, they're gonna be hiding way in the background of our painting. They're just gonna add some detail and some obscure look in the very, very back layer of this painting. I'm just spraying some dark green off to the side, dipping my paintbrush in it and doing a general outline here of some trees, trying to vary the depth and size of these bad boys just to give it a bit of a varied look. Again, perfect is not what you're looking for with these background trees. We just want a hint of tree outline, a general shape, and that's about it. I am gonna come in here with a little sea sponge. So that is what I'm gonna be using to make some foliage on top of these trees. Some more dark green off to the side and I'm just dabbing these and re-upping on the paint, spraying more off to the side and dipping the sea sponge into it. I'm gonna show you an alternative if you don't have access to the sea sponge. The bottom here, I'm just dabbing and streaking to create some grassy effects and some rough foliage. Again, really not a big focus on what we have at the top of the page here. It's all gonna to come together. With this, I'm using some more uh, Montana Gold Transparent White for some foggy effects. I'm gonna layer this fog every time I add a new layer and it's gonna really give some depth. In this painting, I'm just hinting at a river. Uh, it's gonna look a little bit more apparent right now. I'm coming in with a broadhead palette knife, just streaking across, kind of creating some textures in this river or water, if you will. Then I'm gonna come back over that and streak across with my finger. In the end, I never really know exactly how these paintings are gonna turn out. This is really not an important step for how the result showed up in today's finished piece. So I'm not gonna spend a whole bunch of time talking about this. I didn't like this way the river looked. Um, so we're just gonna move right on. From here, I'm doing some black and green. If you guys wanna know how to create some awesome looking highlights in your spray paint art, check out my recent palette knife tutorial. I'm gonna get all into these techniques I'm doing uh, here for this terrain effect in some of these rocky highlighted areas. So if you want to dedicate about half an hour to go learning this, I have a full video tutorial now up on the channel, so make sure to give that a look. If you guys are enjoying the video so far, slap a like, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can stay in tune with when these videos come out. From here, I'm gonna add some kind of evergreen trees, some more foliage. With that, I'm using the sea sponge again, just like at the top of our crappy little trees in the background. And I'm just gonna go in and make the general outline, just kind of dabbling off the edge to get those leafy, varied looks. One more little tree kind of here in the middle. From there, I am gonna add some green, so same technique. I'm actually using the same exact sponge, spraying some green off to the side, coming back over top of this, and just hitting that lighter side. All of our highlights, you'll notice, are gonna be uh, anywhere that that light in the background, that big burst effect, is hitting. So to create that light effect, again, we use that transparent Montana. Then we're coming back in with just some green over top of our black, just to give it a bit of a varied look and a bit more depth to those little trees. Other side, same thing. We're spraying some green down, coming up over top with some black. Uh, can control is key if you want to do those close up little details. You gotta spray pretty close. At the same time, uh, you don't wanna have the paint pool. So you gotta move quick and fast to do those upfront uh, terrain areas without a whole bunch of overspray. So again, can control is key. Keep practicing and you'll get the hang of that over time. Back in with the palette knife. Uh, again, if you wanna master that, go check out that tutorial. It's definitely a good thing to have in your arsenal. Blending some of the paint and we have a nice little rocky 
hub for our next tree. This is gonna be the third style of tree. Before we jump into that, I'm going back in with some very, very light green uh, and just kissing the edges of those trees, really making them come to life. You can kind of see what we're working with now. Uh, coming back, we're gonna go with the same brush we used for our first set of trees at the top with black this time. Uh, I let everything dry just a little bit. This whole painting took me about an hour, uh, so hence the time lapse. Uh, why we're not really taking a slow, full-time, real-time look at this painting. Uh, there's a lot to fit in here. So hopefully you're picking up some ticks, tips and techniques to help you with your spray paint art. Uh, with this, I'm doing just some kind of creepy looking, a uh, little bit of a creepy aesthetic to this one. Limbs, a little bit of a haunting tree here. Uh, just coming in, adding little details, adding little pieces uh, to this tree in the mid-ground here. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna come in and highlight just those edges of those limbs that are kissing that highlighted area. Again, I teach you how to do this in the palette knife tutorials. So there's some really, really in-depth look at how to get these amazing results. As you see, I flip this upside down. Beautiful thing, we can move our poster board around. I am painting on a glossy poster board today. I'm just gonna come in and shade, pardon me, highlight those nice little tree limbs and you really see that tree come to life and pop. Uh, as opposed to having it just be a silhouette. Crappy little trees were fine in the background. In this case, we do want a bit of detail starting to pop through our painting. Again, we're gonna come in with that Montana Gold transparent white, really nice misty effect. For those of you using Rust-Oleum, you can pick up Quick Color. Uh, it's got a similar transparent effect. I do find that there's no uh, kind of bubbling or the, the awful texture you get with that Quick Color sometimes over top of black. So the Montana Gold is really uh, a high quality paint and that Montana Gold Transparent gives that nice, subtle, misty effect. I'm gonna come back in. I'm still not sure what I'm doing with this river at this point. So I'm coming back in and re-highlighting it, making it you know, pop, making it look a little bit more realistic. It's starting to come together a little bit, but in the end, mist is king for this painting. So we went with a really misty look for the whole thing. That's when I decided to make that move there going in, misting out that background, and coming back in with our sea sponge and some black. Keeping in mind, as we work from the background to the foreground of this painting, things are gonna get darker. That's just how light and shadow works. Uh, so make sure you factor that in. We're working and we're getting darker as we go down the line. Um, using black basically just for this whole bottom section, the bottom half of this painting, black is gonna be our main color of choice. When I wanna create that depth of field look, I'm gonna come back in with that transparent Montana. So with this, using our sea sponge once again, coming back in, doing a couple more evergreen trees. This time, I'm gonna skip the green. I'm not uh, gonna throw in any green to this because again, it's getting darker as we go into the foreground here. I'm gonna fill in just the foreground area with some green. You really don't see this come to life, but I wanted to be able to pull off just a little bit with this next step as I texturize and create some more foliage. I'll give you guys one guess what we're gonna do next. We're gonna mist this whole area out. You're seeing each layer getting that bit of mist and it's really making it feel uh, like each layer is in front of the next. It's kind of a key to depth perception. Just setting the stage now for our front ground terrain, which is gonna be pretty much solid black as you see here. Before I go ahead and do our final piece, I'm going to pop in and do a bit more foliage. So I'm just spraying onto an old Frisbee here. If you don't have sea sponge, this is what you're going to use. An old sock, turn it inside out, bunch it up, and go in, and you can make some really awesome terrain effects, um, some really nice foliage, and a nice kind of look here. As you're seeing, some of that green that we sprayed underneath that black is popping through. I'm going to go back in over with some more black. I really don't want much of that popping out but it does give it a bit of a varied look, a bit of a more realistic edge, and just a hint of color. Again, today's painting is monochromatic. We have pretty much just green, white, and black. It does help to have a couple of uh, shades of green on hand. With this, I did touch up with the sea sponge. I like getting those you know, branchy looking effects. It's harder to do with the round sock, but certainly possible. Gonna come in now, mist it out even more, just creating that depth look. You're seeing those uh, those different stages of trees as we work our way up, getting darker and darker. 
One more round of foliage here. I'm just kissing the river's edge with this. So I'm still, you know, alluding to the fact that I have a little river chilling in the, uh, the foreground and throughout this painting and working in the other side here with some foliage as well. We're getting closer to, you know, the finale of this painting. Still lots to check out and one more kind of pro tip on how we can create another tree. Misting it out, going back in, um, just washing out that really bright light source in the background and reiterating our foreground terrain here. From here, we are doing yet another tree. It's going to be in the style of our mid-ground tree. Uh, so with this, I'm using that flathead brush and a skinny tip brush. Spray your spray paint off to the side, dip that paint brush in there, get it nice and soaked, and uh, go in and create some awesome looking trees. Don't overthink this. Trees are gonna look you know, different in nature. They come in all shapes and sizes. So don't stress about making it perfect because um, there's a tree you know, for every style out there in nature. Popping in, we're gonna do quite a bit of work in just uh, making sure these branches come to life, making sure I have lots of nice little wispy effects in here and lots of detail. This is kind of the focal point of today's painting. So with that, I took the most time on this specific tree, just making sure it clicked exactly how I liked. A lot of kind of downturned branches in here, and I really think that helps with the creepy, almost dead tree look to it. Um, almost like a, a weeping willow in a sense, but just having those branches point down really gives that, that you know ominous kind of brooding looking vibe that we're going for in today's painting. I do switch to a skinnier tip brush here just to help me with some of these wispy effects, these more fine line limbs, and uh, really just working in, taking my time. Again, this painting took close to uh, an hour up to this stage, probably about an hour and 20 minutes in total. Uh, so you're not obviously rushing through this. If you want a nice result, sometimes it takes time to get there. Uh, so you're gonna see these branches just playing around like we mentioned making sure it's got you know the right vibe for what I'm trying to go with. And uh, gonna come in with a, a little bit of clear coat before I get into highlighting this. Again, if you guys wanna check out an easy way to highlight your trees in spray paint art, make sure to check out the spray paint art palette knife tutorial. There's gonna be a link below in the description. If you guys are enjoying the video, make sure to hit like and subscribe so you can stay tuned for future spray paint art content. And if you really love the channel, head on over to Patreon and show some love. It helps keep me you know, in spray paint, helps me re-up on supplies, and helps make these videos better. Thanks to those of you who do already support over on Patreon, and thanks to those who subscribe here on the channel. Same thing as before, we're gonna work in some clear coat, and we're just gonna use some really, really subtle effects here. Um, just kissing certain aspects that would be touching that light source in our background giving it a bit of a stronger look than if it was just left to be a silhouette tree. Um, details are really what make the painting come to life. You can have a really simple concept like ours, and just because of the amount of layers we have, that fog and mist separating each layer, really giving that sense of depth. This painting, I think in the end, really came to life. I'm really satisfied with the result. Uh, hopefully you guys are enjoying watching along. It's not really about painting the exact same piece that I did here today. It's just about picking up some new techniques, a new way of thinking, maybe a tip or two to help you, you know, make your spray paint art even better. For those of you who are accomplished already in the world of spray paint art, uh, hopefully this video gave you a tip or two uh, to try to help, you know, elevate things even further to the next level here. That's gonna be the result of today's painting. One more blast here of foggy mist in the front just to finish off and stick with our theme. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed. Once again, make sure to hit subscribe. If you guys want to share your artwork with me, pop on over to the Aristotle subreddit and you might be featured in a future video. Until then, slap that like button and I'll see you guys again in a future spray paint art video.